Hey friends, Karen Pennington here. I hope you're doing well this morning or evening or whenever you're watching this. It's a morning for me. I just had a quick thought for you today of just now. This is a real time thing for me. And just this morning as I was worshiping and praying, I felt a release to do shorter posts. A few people had been asking me to do shorter posts and I thought this might be a good idea, but I felt like maybe I needed to give more in-depth teaching because there's lots of short posts. Well, as of this morning, <laughs> I'll let you know how this goes. As of this morning, short posts. So that's a big enough introduction to that. Uh, I just, I had a thought for you today. I was thinking, um, again, just now, about a friend of mine. I can't even tell you where. I just remember that this person was able to be like a volunteer for the Super Bowl or work the Super Bowl or something. I can't remember what Super Bowl it was. All I know is the person was doing parking, helping people park in the right place. And that person ended up being able to be present sort of at the Super Bowl. <laughs> they didn't see it. They were like outside and they could kind of hear it. And it was like, you could, they could watch on their television, but they could hear it. But they were so, so excited. I thought it was so funny because I'm like parking attendant. But they were so excited because they got to be at this huge event, at this epic event, and be part of it. And even though they weren't, you know, obviously right there in the center, they weren't a football player, they felt like, you know what, I had a small part, but it was an important part and a really, really big thing. And, and it was needed because there's a lot of cars at the Super Bowl. So it was still important. And I just, I remember being struck by the fact that on one time, on one hand, you could be like, okay, here's this person who's a business person who has a good job and they were excited about being a parking attendant. <laughs> then on the other hand, the way they were looking at it is this is an epic event and I got to be part of an epic event, a part that was needed in an epic event. And, uh, you know, I wish we would think that way about ourselves and our role in the kingdom of God. Um. I'm talking about our role in the fellowship. Um, I'm talking about when we encourage each other. Have you ever just had someone come up and say something to you that was so kind and they didn't even realize how much you needed to hear it? Um, I've wept over stuff like that. Have you ever had somebody come up to you and say, you know, the Lord just laid it on my heart to remind you. You're beautiful. You're valuable in God's sight. You're needed. You're wanted. Um, and that just been an epic thing. Um, have you ever shown up to church and everything was messed up because nobody cleaned it? Ever shown up to church, a new church, and not known where to go because there was somebody, wasn't anyone there to greet them? Have you never ever needed someone to sit with you or a word of encouragement and they just weren't there? You know, it works both ways. We um, we know that feeling when we're in a church where everybody's taking their job seriously and seeing it as a ministry, and we know what it's like when that doesn't happen. Unfortunately, more often, we recognize it when we miss it. Well, uh, God doesn't delineate. God doesn't tell us you're going to do the lesser thing of pouring coffee or sweeping floors. That's not a God thing. That's an us thing. We make a decision that what we're doing is not important, and then we don't do it. And then something's missed, you know? But the good side of that is, you know, God can do anything without us. We can still have a church with ten people or four people or, or fellowship, you know? But God allows us to be part of this thing, you know? Like, God allows us to be part of something much greater than the Super Bowl. God allows us to take a part in this epic event of the salvation and redemption of people. You know, the saving of the world, of this renewal of creation. We get to be part of that. We get to be part of that. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at First Chronicles. There's a lot of chapters here. I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to give you an outline. So David is about to die and he's setting up the temple. He's not just setting up the temple. He's not just setting up literally billions of dollars worth of jewels and equipment to set up this actually fairly relatively small church comparatively to today. And, um, wouldn't look like a mega church, but lots of people came. He's also setting up the priests and um, the people who are going to take care of the temple. Now, the Israelites, 
originally, you know, before Jesus came, they were a nation that was made out of 12 sons of someone named Israel or Jacob. And one of those 12 tribes was the Levites. And back in that day, all of the priests came from the Levite clan. It was such an important task that one group of people was set aside. They were given land. They were, you know, had the training and all that. But Levites, when we talk about Levites being the religious people, the people that were in charge of the house of God, it's, it wasn't just the priests. There was a whole division that was priests. And we're talking, I'm talking about First Chronicles, um, we're talking 23 through 26. So there's four chapters talking about what the Levites did. One part of one chapter talks about being a priest. Then they talk about the administrators. People that kind of, I guess they'd be considered deacons in the church. Then they talk about the singers. Yeah, the people that sang were ministers. Then they talked about the people that took care of the elements, you know, the bread of the presence, the people who took care of the treasuries. So there were finance people there. There were people who took care of the physical equipment. There were cleaners. There were storers, there were counters, there were guards. Guards? That one speaks to me because my husband's the head of security at our church, or the head of safety and security team, or whatever it's called. Um, so there were so many different people. And never in this list does it say these were the, other than there were the overseers, so I guess you could get an eagle from that. But beyond that, it wasn't like, so the singers were put below the priests, you know, in terms of how good they were. And the gatekeepers, they were just the people that couldn't do anything else. And the cleaners, well, pff, how are we going to get those? It was like a divine appointment. That's a word that I'm becoming very familiar with. It was a divine appointment. It wasn't just a random thing where, let me throw a broom in your hand, you can't do anything else. It was God called and appointed, they used the casting of lot system and to, to determine God's will at this point. God called and appointed people, and it was a special position given to a special family and special groups within that family, and it was sacred. They were appointed, they were anointed, and they were important, and they knew that. It wasn't just humdrum stuff. It was a holy, divine appointment. I don't think it's any different nowadays. Well, let me qualify that. I need to get the right scripture here. Revelation 1.6 talks about how Jesus appoints us all now to be a kingdom and to be priests. Now, kingdom of God, we're talking about the church, not just a building. We're talking about a fellowship of believers. And we're appointed to be priests. We're all priests. You know the Lord, you're a priest. If you know the Lord, then you have a divine appointment to be a representative of the Lord. So I don't like getting up and preaching. You say, that's okay. Not a whole huge percentage of the Levites, you know, the priest people, were preachers. Um, so I can't teach. Fine. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so I can't do this. So I can't do that. You know, there's a place. And there's a call, and there's a divine appointment, and there's a blessing. Not just for you. God's appointed you, us all, who know the Lord, to be a blessing to someone else. So when we're not showing up, we rob ourselves of our blessing and the other person's blessing. I don't know if that's a little bit of a downer for those of us who are like, I don't do the church thing. I'm not even talking about Sunday. Sunday's good. I don't do the gathering. I just me and God on my own. No hogwash. Hogwash. We are appointed to be with each other. We are appointed to be a blessing. And as we bless each other and as we bless God, it grows. It's a good thing. It's a call. It's a challenge. To some degree, it's a command. Because when God tells you to do something, you should do it, you know. But it's the best way to live. I don't want you to miss out on that. So what is God calling you to do? What is your divine appointment? What, how is it that God wants you to serve others? Not just on Sunday morning. Although, please show up to some sort of fellowship somewhere at some point in the week. 
doesn't have to be in a church building all the time, but show up. And what are you missing out on when you're not doing that? That's the grace. Let's get together more. Let's get excited. Even about five words of blessing we can give to somebody else. Because back in the day, you had to be part of a privileged tribe to do it. And we're all allowed to be part of this great Super Bowl event and so much better than that. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you that you allow us and you call us and you want us to be part of what you're doing. You don't need us, God, but you bless us and you use us. Help us to get excited about it because it's about the most exciting thing on earth to be part of what the Creator and Sustainer of the whole universe is doing, Lord. Help us to understand and receive and own our role because we want those blessings, Lord. And we want you to be glorified. In your name, amen. Be blessed, my friends.